I'll get started because it's actually um, a post that I saw in the Crafting with Lisa Horton group um, from Tony who wanted to achieve the ombre effect and just needed a few pointers on how to get the best um, out of the effect. Um, it's one of those techniques I find um, that it actually took a bit of practice and you just need to get a few things right and then once you've actually um, once you've got all of those sort of stones all in line, um, you'll be well away and you can sort of blend and create all sorts of effects to your heart's content. Um, now, it's one of those things also that it will give you really good practice on your ink blending. And that's something that also does come with practice, actually. And again, having the right tools, I've found over the years that it really, really does help. So I wanted to show you how to create those today. Um to start with, I would say the card stock that you choose um, can make make or break this technique initially when you first get started. Um, once you sort of know the technique and you're um, familiar with your um, how to blend in the inks, then you can do it on most card stocks, I must admit. But to start off with a super smooth card stock like Lisa's, um, really does aid because you know that the um the ink moves really well over the surface um now in my opinion also using these blending brushes by lisa is a game changer now say i've been crafting for years and the only way that we used to be able to blend inks were on these sponge applicators if you remember those and um you you could achieve the same looks. I mean, that's all we had. So we worked with it and, and we was able to get the effects. But I know when these came onto the market and these ones by Lisa in particular, um, because they are so dense, these made things so much easier. Um, and I go back and I sort of refer to my mum as well. She crafts. Um, she's brilliant at decoupage and fussy cutting. She's She's got the patience for that. I don't. <laughs> um, but... She always, not say she struggles, she hasn't quite got that technique when it comes to blending and she's always asking for different tips and I know I've given her these and because these are domed, um, she's found these, she's able to get the effects that she's wanting to get and um, she's able to sort of achieve them a lot easier with these brushes. Um, so hopefully you'll have these as well. Now I have achieved the effect with Lisa's small bijou brushes as well but I won't use those today. Um, and then we come on to the inks, of course. Um, again, these are, are really new to the range and they're going to be so integral to Lisa's um, uh, range. And I know I know she's already thinking about um, a second set of colours to sort of complement what we've got here. So the more that us as a design team can use these for you and show you that these actually work as well as the Distress inks, which is what we're all perhaps familiar with, um, then that's great. All the effects that I'll have achieved today with these link, these inks can be achieved with the Distress inks. Now, one of the things that I did suggest to Tony initially was to work on a smaller area of cardstock before sort of moving up into a larger area because um, you've got an awful lot more blending if you want to sort of work on even half an A4 sheet or a whole A4 sheet you've got an awful lot of blending to do there and um, I think it's it's definitely worth working on a smaller area just to build up those techniques now these it's really lovely actually to create an ombre background because although I'm using these as the focal point of a card you can just say create yourself a piece of ombre inking and you can actually die cut into them. Um, if I die cut into this panel, um, even these background florals, which I've used here, these are the trailing leaves. Um, I cut them out in black because I thought, thought the silhou silhouette would look perfect. Um, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't actually die cut into the ombre effect and give you some stunning effects with leaves or foliage or flowers, um, text, Whatever the, the dyes that you have, it would be perfect. So I'm going to work with the largest of the brushes because that gives me the most coverage. Um, now, Tony was using these colours, so she's got the per the colours perfectly um, right. So the, the blend from the red, the orange to the yellow, which is 
the, the look that we want to achieve. Um, now with the ombre effect, we do use a lot of ink. So usually I go quite subtle with my inking, but this time I really want to go all out. So I'm really going to swipe uh, my brush onto the ink there and pick that up. Um, <clears throat> now one thing, I'm working onto my messy mat here. You can work onto a, I usually use other um, blending mats which are more like a, a plastic. You can also use the um, silicone mat which Lisa has brought out in the past which have got the ink wells down the side. That works perfectly well. But I'm using my messy mat because it gives me a nice large area. What you want to do, we want to apply the ink in circular motions like this. Um, and I always do this and I work directly onto my mat first. And by doing that, then I start bringing the ink onto my project. Now you'll see straight away that we don't have any intensity of colour of there, but the key here is patience. So come back in with more, more ink, circular motions all the time. And I'm, I'm not pressing really, really hard. Um, I don't need to do that because the more that I blend in circular motion, the more ink will be transferred from the brush onto the card. So just keep coming back and taking yourself more ink. Um, you'll find also that I'm actually working at a slight angle. Now, if I bring this up like so, I'm actually working at a slight angle um, off the mat, which will be here, onto my card. And this is another great design of these brushes also, because these aren't flat, these have a natural dome. You are naturally going to have that slight angle already there for you. Um, and that again helps with the putting the ink evenly from the brush and the mat onto your project. Now, I also have a spare piece of copy paper here because already I'm getting um, ink marks way up my paper that's usually because I get so messy um, usually I'm quite a clean crafter until it comes to inking like this and then we get it everywhere so all I'm just doing is putting the copy paper there for no other reason other than just to keep it clean and hold it <clears throat> so again I've picked up more ink and I'm just coming in and blend 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 and you can see that this color intensity of color is starting to build up nicely now that I've got a good amount of ink onto my card you'll find that I'm actually going straight onto my card now. Right, so what I'm going to do, um, right, we're using three colours, so obviously we want to split our um, piece of work into three sections, roughly. So I've, I think I've done about a third of this cardstock here. So, now I am going to clear this ink away. You don't necessarily have to, it's entirely up to you, but I think for this demo, I think it's worth doing. Now I'm also just going to give my brush a quick wipe and I just onto a microfiber cloth and just brush off the excess red there because we don't want that tainting the orange too much at this stage. Okay, so now we come on to our second colour. Now you may think this is slightly more difficult because we're not going directly to the end, we, but we do work from either side and this technique still stays the same. You work from your mat onto the paper just to introduce that ink initially onto the card. So we then pick up more ink and we work from the other side and meet in the middle. So we can see that that ink is actually laying down. At this stage, we. Um, I would say don't worry about the blend between the two colours. At this stage, all we want to do is just lay down that colour, that intensity of colour onto the cardstock um, for about another third. So I'd say we've got the area just about right there. So just keep working from side to side. And as I said with the red, once we have the intensity of colour on the card, we can then pretty much go with our brush from the ink direct onto the cardstock there and just blend, blend, blend. And you can see that, that intensity of color really does build up. And there's always more ink on the brush than you realize. So even though you may think you're not moving a huge amount around, there's plenty of ink on here just to keep doing that blend. And you can get, you can see we have that evenness of color 
now that we have that then i would say just come down to this this slight stripe between the two colors and just add a little bit more of this color like that okay you can see how we're starting to get that effect now i'm just going to come in with a bit of red and all I'm going to do is now concentrate on the area between the two colours. And just blend, blend, blend. This, the key to this really, really is the repetition. I, this is why I find this quite relaxing, actually. I could spend hours doing this. And I can sort of... My mind will sort of drift off onto other things. But this, this circular motion, round and round and round, is the key to getting that really smooth blend. So now just to create, just make this airbrush effect, um, you'll sense yourself what colour you perhaps need to add more of. I think I need to add a little bit more red just to sort of start pushing that into the orange area. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And you can see now how that stripe is starting to disappear. And we have that sort of the seamless airbrushed look is what I like to call it going from one colour to another so we have the red and the orange blended there and they do go so well together so what we can do now I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe this away because I don't want the next colour tainted we want the true the true shade of each colour coming through I think now we have one section left um, and I've turned this around so now we can start dealing with this last third the same way as we did with the red and um, working from the mat directly onto the cardstock there. Now I am going to clean that off again just because we want that pure yellow um, initially to go onto the card before we start blending. Now you see I'm still using my copy paper um, just to cover that over so I'm not getting any ink or fingerprints in there and I'm not making my fingers mucky either. So onto the yellow, we pick up a good amount of yellow from the card, um, from your mat onto the cardstock. And again, you'll see that we don't have the intensity of colour initially. But again, it's just patience, patience, just carry on working and you will get there. You will get there. And you'll see that each time I do the blending, my motion with the brush hasn't stopped. And I'm not pushing really hard, so it's not hard work um, on your hand at all. Um, we all hold our brushes different ways. So even if you hold the brush sort of down this way and you have less pressure on the, on the head, it just may take you a little bit longer. But again, it's always worth that perseverance of just doing adding little bit by little bit and building it up and you will get there you absolutely will get there and you, and you know what particularly with Lisa's inks they are so juicy um you pick up so much ink in what seems like a you know just a, a tiny little swipe I mean these are the juiciest ink pads I've ever used but they it's a controllable juicy if you know what I mean I'm, I've had some ink pads and they've completely flooded when they've got back home to me and they are just I find just unusable because they flood the stamps when you ink them they flood your brushes and you just can't work with it but um, I, whether it's the the composition of the ink and the way these are actually manufactured I don't know but this they are actually a joy to work with. The more that I'm using them, um, I think these are definitely going to take over the inks that I have. Now, I am a bit of a hoarder of inks, I must admit. Not so much papers, um, definitely stamps, <laughs> but inks. If there's a, I don't know, I'm like a kid in the sweet shop when a new ink comes out. Um, but I do have my favourites that I go back to and... I must admit, I haven't actually used any other inks since I've had these ones in. Now, you can see I'm chatting away there, um, and the yellow has gone down perfectly. So now it's probably time just to blend those two colours. So just come down slightly into where the orange is, and you'll, what you'll start doing, just introducing and blending that yellow into the orange there. Um, you can take a little bit more orange, uh, yellow, sorry. And just go in 
But looking at it, I would say that I think I need a bit more orange to start going into the yellow. So I'm going to turn that around. Now, the reason why I do that, I find blending from left, um, right to left the easiest way. So when I blend and cir circle mush, I go this way. Um, you'll have your own way of doing that. Um, and again, which is why I say working on something smaller, it allows you to pick up all these little um, techniques that will be unique to you to make this technique work for you. Um, that's I think is a really good way to practice. So I'm going to come in with some orange just so we can perhaps just soften that between the orange and the yellow there. And you can see straight away that that has really taken away that stripe. Okay. Now I'm doing these with the lovely autumn colours because this is what um, the look that Tony wanted to achieve within the group. But, of course, choose any colours. Um, blues would look fabulous for this. Um, blues into pinks work. Um, you can use a purple, a blue and then a pink and work it that way. They don't have to be complementary colours. Um, you can blend any colour into any colour um, with this technique. As long as it's seamless and you so, you know, using your circular motions, you can get a really lovely blend like that. Hopefully I've given you a lot of techniques there. Say so this live isn't necessarily about finishing a... Um, finishing a card for you because you're all brilliant at that but I know that um, a lot of you will want to have different techniques to create different um, to create different looks now this you could then go on to emboss this and this would look amazing you can die cut it as I say you can ink on top of it um, you can put your silhouette die cuts on top um, I mean I've got a few extra bits die cut here um, and you can add these on. And they look amazing. Um, I mean, it really is just giving you that background to create whatever you want, actually. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll probably leave that with you there today. I shall have a play and I shall probably make these panels into, um, into some cards. I mean, there was a card also that I've created with this set but it did involve um, using the ombre effect through these stencils so I think I'll do a quick video on that as well. So thanks so much for joining me today this half an hour goes really quick doesn't it but say I really love these inking techniques um, so enjoy the rest of your week everyone thanks so much for joining me today loved having you all here and I shall see you again next week. Mm -hmm.